is D DJ, DJ Chung. His piece for reference is actually the first piece right by the door. Um, and maybe y'all can move a little bit, give people a little bit of sight of the piece. Um, yeah, so thank you, DJ. Thank you for being here. Uh, please sit down. Um, yeah, I've, I've, we've recently met formally. Um, I met you at your studio when I was coming to get this piece probably about two or three weeks ago. Um, but I've known about DJ's work uh, for about uh, four or five months now. I, and, uh, Austin actually introduced me to his work just kind of in passing. And then um, he had a solo show at uh, the Fort Worth Community Arts Center. Uh, if you're not aware about it, it's a very um, it's a community-based uh, project. It's right to the left of the Amy Carter Museum. Um, beautiful show. That's where I saw this piece here um, and really admired your work. And so um, it's a pleasure for you to, to be here and speak about your, your piece. Um, yeah, I guess I would like to start with, you know, your background, where you're from, your origins, and kind of how you found yourself in Dallas yeah. as, you know, in the 10 district and you being a, a working artist there. Right. Uh, I'm actually, I'm from South Korea, but I came to Dallas about like 10 years ago. And I'm working in the architect farm as a civil engineer. Okay. And then I moved back, moved to, moved to the Boston to study okay. like psychology of fine art. And then I came back here. And luckily, I have like I've been able to pursue my career as a, a full-time artist. Uh, very beginning from like, after my graduation. So, and I've been actively involved in the uh, artist community, like huge artist community. Like a content and gym building in development. Mm -hmm. They used to be a big factory, but we used to have like 50 artists in there. But we all kicked out. And <laughs> we all kicked, <laughs> we kicked out, actually. Okay. And now I'm in the team industry, and we, just, uh, we have like a lot of artists in there. So, like, those kind of working environment actually gives me the chance, the chance to like discussion. Sure. Art. Sure. Yeah. They always discussion about art and the, uh, like exchange ideas too. Yeah. So when you say you you've been very, um, mm -hmm. it's been very fulfilling in that regard. You know, you've met a lot of people yeah. in Dallas that have affected and inspired you in some way. Yeah. But what, have they inspired your work <clears throat> technically, or is it more so from well, the I point of your spirit and kind yeah, of how you express it's yourself? An aspect to see. Art and the uh, maybe culture aspect. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, I've been in the United States for like just ten years, so like it was kind of new to me. Mm -hmm. And the art is kind of new to me too. Like when I was an architect, I never went to the museum. Really? Never. Okay. <laughs> so like, it's, it's just focus. Yeah. 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 So it was kind of surprised that I became an artist. Okay. So you probably didn't start painting until you went to Boston. Yeah. Gotcha. So how did how did that uh, affect, or how did you get inspired? Was it a specific artist, or was it school in general? Or no. Uh, after I graduation, I've been applying to my graduate school. I've been mm -hmm. accepted, but like I decided to travel more because I had keen interest like in the events happening in the world. So I just gave up on the graduate school and I started traveling in the refugee camps around the world <coughs> and volunteering in the refugee camp and volunteering in the homeless shelter or like also interested in the faith, the issues faced by immigrants. Yeah, so I mean that, I feel like that gets into uh, this specific piece here. I mean, you told me that it was very much so inspired by a mission trip you took. Uh, you went to Haiti, Haiti, right? Yeah, Haiti. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's 2022. But I'm not like it's more like interesting about, about people. Yeah. Know, like it's like circumstance, like you know, and the resonance in dealing with like those kind of struggles. That's what I'm interested in. Too. So like, I talk a lot with people with the refugees and having that kind of struggle. You know, so with this single like from that, I can say like I saw like people's anxiety, and anger. Frustration. But 
more so, I found the, like, I can say, what I can say, I found the like, profile and alignment in the like, determination of key point. You know? Sure, after all of yeah, that. Yeah, so like, I got inspired by that from my trouble. I started painting about it. Here I am. <laughs> uh, maybe you can speak a little bit technically. I mean, a lot of your pieces have, um, you know, they're landscape pieces, but I think that stands out is the, the figurative yeah. pieces, like, you know, elements in them that are actually more abstract and kind of material. So, mm -hmm. why do you choose to have these figurative pieces in, uh, as the centerpiece of the work? Is, is it a specific individual? Is it a spirit? Or are you trying to, what are you trying to convey? With that well, element of your work, so like from my experience, you know, I just from my experience, I start questioning myself about how I can find myself in this work, you know, like those kind of questions, like how I, you know, gives inspired change to my work and offer like new perspective for like like the rest of us in this work. You know? Those kind of questions. So I thought, yeah, so that kind of question makes me think about how I can express sure. the inside, yeah. inner side of the human being. Yeah. And is, is there any specific, because um, you know, I read your, um, your bio, your statement on your website, specifically about the Code Red series. Okay. Um, and I saw that you, you referenced a philosopher named uh, Maurice Merleau-Ponty. Merleau -Ponty, yeah. yeah, yeah. So has that literature and his ideas uh, affected <laughs> your work? Oh, a lot actually. Like all the philosophers actually I admire. Uh huh. Because the Merleau-Ponty said like more about the body and the environment. In perception, in perception and how you engage with the environment and, and how you so see. So like yeah. those kind of. Here it actually gave me inspired, so. And I'm sure you, 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 you use that temperament in your practice, like the bodily experience that you have with your work in the studio. Mm -hmm. um, I do a lot of meditation, like starting from my work, and I don't usually sketch. I just start. Free base. Just, free base. yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't, I, 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 like, I should have Yeah. Keep going. Exactly. So, like, that, those kind of practice from like when I went to Greece in the refugee camp, actually, I, just, I tried to take a photo of the people. And they, the armies are there, and they actually took my phone and erased all the photos. Really? Yeah. Where? So from that experience, I start practicing like just imagination, like imagination, sure. or, like image. Yeah. To the, the canvas. Or like that. So like from that experience, I could. That gave me the direction. So you said it's more of a, a meditative practice yeah. before you start going in. And do you say that? Would you say that kind of gives you a sense of a, a sense of energy before you go into the painting? Is that kind of what you're hoping for? Or is it more of just about kind of getting space from the work before you kind of go into it? Oh uh, yeah. So. I mean, you're talking about the message. Right? Well, not necessarily the message, more so about like, you know, we talked about the bodily experience of, you know, experiencing your press practice in painting. Um, yeah, I guess the question is more so, do you meditate from a physical perspective to kind of get more into the body? Or is it more from the conceptual perspective? What about the perspective? conceptual and the story? And the story, gotcha, gotcha. Got you. Got you. Yeah. Okay. I, when, I, when I go to the like, camps or helping people, you know, yeah. I just talk to people a lot, because mm -hmm. I stay there for three, four months every time I go there, and I just, I teach, like, art classes for the kids, and, like, those kind of relationships, actually, I try to remind them, I mean, remember those kind of stories and energy. Sure, and bringing it into and your work with yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the process of that. No, I think that's great, I think it's, it's amazing, yeah. Um, does anybody have any questions for DJ Donna? Yeah, DJ. Um, I know you went to school in Boston. I'm curious. 
I know you said you, you, know, you did relief in, in Haiti, but when you say Boston, like, there's so much um, of American history there mm -hmm. and architecture. Um, so I was wondering, like, first, what school did you go to, and second, like, how did the history in Boston and the architecture like affect your practice? Mm. That's an interesting question. I went to the Tufts University, uh, so I could do the Dura degree program. I think that's the, that's the only school I could, I could, I could find. So mm -hmm. I did the psychology of fine art in there. And through that, I didn't thought about becoming an artist, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I was going to be a, more like a therapist. But in Boston, the culture, I really inspired by culture in Boston too, because mm -hmm. there's a lot of school in Boston. Yeah. And they are they every almost every week they have lecture from really famous people coming there and talk about uh -huh. like, this kind of social problems and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I've been engaging with that all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean that really gives gives me a lot of ideas too. And try to think, and try to see the different aspect of the like, social problems. And that's why it's kind of hard. When I when I make the process of my work, it's just I always question that how I can make a balance between like the con contextual like meaning and visual aesthetic. Mm -hmm. that, that I'm questioning myself all the time. It's really hard because. You're dealing with like social problems. It's very sensitive too. Yeah. So it's hard. But <laughs> I mean, that practice is really giving me insight to do this kind of things. Yeah. Yeah. Does anybody else have any questions, DJ? Yeah, actually.
All right, beautiful. Please give a round of applause to the DJ.